Good evening, everyone. Here's what's coming up next on Acadiana's News Channel at 5. The search continues for 12 missing workers after a lift boat capsized off the coast. Tonight, several families, including some in Acadiana, waiting for answers. Plus, parts of Acadiana under a state of emergency following this week's wet weather. And let's get a check of the forecast. Daniel Phillips with us tonight. Daniel, what can we expect out there? Well, unfortunately, another round of showers, another round of thunderstorms on the way for tomorrow. Maybe looking a little bit better for the weekend. We'll talk about it in my full weather forecast. Also tonight, he was instrumental in getting Lafayette's new VA clinic. Now his fellow veterans are working to honor him in a big way. We'll have those stories and more news right now on KTC. On the air and streaming live on your favorite device, this is KATC TV3, Acadiana's news channel at 5. And thanks for joining us for Acadiana's news channel at 5 o'clock. I'm Jim Hummel. And I'm Marcel Fontenot. Tonight, dive teams are on site of the search and rescue effort for the wrecked Seacor power lift boat. They're working to find the 12 missing people who are still believed to be on board. It went down Tuesday afternoon about eight miles south of Port Fouchon. This is now being called a major marine casualty incident. Here's the latest information we have from the Coast Guard. So far, it has searched an area that's about 6,380 6, miles. That's roughly the size of Hawaii. Members of the NTSB are joining the Coast Guard to investigate what happened to the lift vessel. We have also learned the names of the person whose body was found yesterday. He has been identified as Captain David Ledette. And take a look at this photo from the Coast Guard. It shows a member throwing a hammer in an effort to make contact with any possible survivors on board the Seacor Power. Families of the missing men are anxiously waiting for any word on their loved ones. Our Katie Easter spoke with one family who hopes they will soon hear good news. Katie. The Pete and Walcott family tell me they're facing another agonizing day of waiting, but some hope has been renewed. According to the Walcott family, the Coast Guard says those still on the ship can live for several days. Crystal Randall tells KTC her 62 year old uncle Gregory Walcott of Abbeville is one of the 12 men still missing. Randall says the last update came early Thursday morning. Divers would not be out due to the weather conditions. Randall says while it is frustrating, they remain hopeful. Walcott and the other 11 members make a safe return. They're hoping that they are there um, in those air pockets. But as of right now, Yes, that's it. That's, that's all we have. The Peep family also tells me the Coast Guard will give families an update twice a day. In Lafayette, Kitty Easter, KTC TV3. And the father of Dylan Daspit, who is one of the four Acadiana men missing, is searching for his son. Our partners at The Advocate say Scott Daspit arrived in Port Fouchon this afternoon. He says he last heard from Dylan the morning they left and that he hasn't been able to give his son a birthday card. Here's Daniel's 24 hour forecast. And unfortunately, it was more showers and thunderstorms down along the coastline here earlier on today. Now everything getting a little bit of a break right now. A lot of clouds out there still and more showers on the way. In fact, we're going to see the shower activity kind of pick up as we go into tomorrow. We do get a break from that here a little later on tonight. But as I mentioned, you do have some or, or you did have some showers down there off along the coastline a little bit earlier on today. We are still talking about a flash flood watch that is going to be in effect. That flash flood watch is going to be sticking with us basically basically through the day tomorrow and on into Saturday about Saturday afternoon. We may be able to bring this thing down finally because I do think that we have a little bit in the way of some some drier conditions that are going to be on the way and a big part of the reason why we have the watch is it's been so wet over the last couple of days. This is a look at rain totals over the last three days. And you're talking on average about two to four inches worth across the Katie and of course you do have some hot spots that have been picking up six seven inches worth and again this is over the last three days means the ground really, really saturated, especially as you start to get out over towards eastern parts of Acadiana. Now, unfortunately, we've got another round of wet weather that's going to be swinging through the area tomorrow. I think as we get into the afternoon, we'll start to see things picking up. I think prime time for the action tomorrow is going to be somewhere right around noon and then continuing on into the late afternoon and then starting to look a little bit better for the evening as well. Now, I do think that by the time we get to the weekend, things are going to start to ease up a little bit. High tomorrow getting up to 72. We're down in the low 60s tonight. We'll have more on your forecast coming up here in just a little bit. Headlines Parish by Parish. Now we start in St. Martin, where a state of emergency has been declared for the lower parts of the parish. 
because of rising water in Stevensville and Bell River. This is on top of the state of emergency Governor Edwards has issued for the entire state. Right now, Bayou Estate Subdivision and Four Mile Bayou are closed to all non-resident traffic. Adele Street, Edna Street and Landry Road also remain closed. The Lafayette Fire Department is investigating an early morning house fire on Seamall Road in Karen Crow. A family of four, two adults, a child and a toddler were able to escape. The home was destroyed. A Lafayette man has pleaded guilty to manslaughter and the deaths of two people, and he's also been sentenced. Joseph Delahousse pled guilty today in the death of Rachel Alexander and the armed robbery and death of Bobby Duplachin. The, death hap the deaths happened in 2016 and 17. In exchange for Delahousse's guilty plea, he was sentenced to 40 years hard labor on each count of manslaughter, along with 80 years hard labor on the count of armed robbery. During the day, it's a hub for business and restaurants, but by night, a Lafayette shopping plaza at Ambassador Caffrey and Kali Saloom turns into a place for trucks and sports cars. Our Kaylee Norman spoke with a young woman who was hit by a racer in that parking lot, as well as business owners who say enough is enough. Amanda Buller, the mother of the young lady who was in the car accident this past weekend, says that when she got the phone call from her daughter that night, her heart sank. Not a good feeling in the middle of the night. Uh, I think I made it here pretty quick. Um, I didn't know too much at the, the time of what happened, so upon arrival and seeing her car, you obviously expect the worst. According to the family, their daughter was turning left into the Raisin Cane's parking lot off of Cali Saloon. That's when a lifted truck turned the corner at the stop sign, hitting her car. He apologized for uh, what he had done, and he said that his brakes were not working. Uh, however, he stated that he was doing 10 miles an hour. Um, it's obvious uh, from skid marks, she flew back eight spots. So there's not, you know, that wasn't, wasn't the case. Buller says when police arrived, they told her there was nothing that can be done to reprimand the racers. They did state that it is illegal um, for the squatted trucks, the lit trucks, um, and excessive speed through parking lots. However, there was nothing that they can do, um, that it was private property. Um, and this does happen every weekend. So, Buller isn't the only one who was fed up with the excessive speeding and racing in the parking lot. Crystal Rogers, the owner of Silver Suitcase, is concerned for her customers. We have customers and we have customers that are walking that parking lot and going to eat there because our shopping center, what we're wanting is that every you park and then you kind of like walk to all the different little spots. So to us, that's a huge concern. Many people on social media echo those worries. With most wondering what it will take to get something done about the issue. I think it's going to take someone it, you know, as sad as that, it's going to take something even bigger, another or that constantly happen, happening um, to stop them from doing it. We did reach out to the Lafayette Police Department to see what's being done about the issue. We have not yet heard back from them and we will continue to pursue that answer for you guys. Reporting in Lafayette, I'm Kaylee Norman, KTC TV3. And here are today's COVID numbers. The Louisiana Department of Health tonight reporting 791 new cases of COVID-19 and nine new deaths today. Acadiana accounting for nearly 27% of those new cases. Two deaths reported in Acadiana, one in Calcasieu and one in St. Mary. Hospitalizations are up by 13. Currently, 338 people around the state are hospitalized with COVID and 45 of those patients are on ventilators. The Department of Health also announcing what they're calling a major milestone today. Over 1 million people across the state have completed a vaccine series. That's 22% of residents vaccinated. Across the state, 30% of Louisiana residents have received the first dose of either the Pfizer or Moderna vaccines. In Region 4, which is here and making up most of Acadiana, more than 18% of the population is vaccinated. In Lafayette Parish, that number is over 21%. The parish with the lowest rate in Acadiana is Vermillion at 14%. Those who complete the two-dose regimen of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine will likely need a third shot within 12 months. That according to Pfizer CEO. Similar to the seasonal flu shot, there is also a chance people will need to receive an annual vaccination. Well, in tonight's rebound, National Crime Victims Rights Week is next week, and members of the nonprofit Voice Support Group are honoring crime victims in Acadiana with a virtual rally. The group usually rallies in person for victims and their families. That also includes a butterfly release. Well, because of the pandemic this year, they will be holding the rally virtually and the butterfly release as well. It's all happening on their Facebook page, Voice Support Group Nonprofit. Each morning next week, go to the Facebook page and see how victims are being honored that day.
going to be more like, you know, posting. And I want, I want to engage the people to post also. So for like the butterfly release, release we would kind of want people to put their loved one's name or a picture of them or a poem that they would like to say. We, I want to do, like I say early, in action, not just, you know, live and then that's it. Each day is going to be something different. There's an effort underway to name Lafayette's VA clinic after a man who fought for the country, then fought for access to health care for his fellow veterans. The name change would require action from Congress and the signature of the president. And now a group of local vets needs your help in making that happen. The ribbon cutting in 2016 came after years of work by the Veterans Action Coalition of Southwest Louisiana, led by the late Rodney C. Hamilton Sr., a Purple Heart recipient and Marine Corps veteran of the Korean War. Rodney was a, he was a fighter. He was definitely a fighter. He was a, you know, you couldn't ask for a better man. Hamilton died in November. He put together the board, recruited the board. I spoke with his comrades on the Veterans Action Coalition of Southwest Louisiana outside the facility made possible by Rodney Hamilton. It was a big fight getting this. Right, and it, it, it took a long time, and fortunately the efforts paid off. No better name should be placed on this building than Rodney Hamilton because of his efforts, so many veterans are being taken care of much better than they were before. The road to the VA already bears Mr. Hamilton's name, but the coalition says he deserves more because his impacts go far beyond Lafayette's clinic. They built 27 clinics and Rodney's responsible for that. He started this movement. A movement that freed up funding in Congress and not just for Lafayette's clinic, but clinics around the country. Before 2016, this was the facility in Lafayette. It paled in size and services offered for veterans. I sat there one day with a two o'clock appointment mm -hmm. and sat there and decided after five o'clock I was leaving. Mm. Uh, that's just the way that old clinic worked. Mm -hmm. This is so much better. And like Hamilton did all those years ago, the Veterans Action Coalition is also out with a petition to rename the facility in his honor. His, his efforts have you know, proven tremendous for many veterans in this community. And I think it's uh, probably a fitting tribute to him because he's so much uh, the hero in, in this story. And if you'd like to sign the petition, you can go to change.org slash Rodney Hamilton. We'll also have that linked on our website. And I did reach out to Congressman Higgins, who says if there is widespread support, he will lead the legislation. Still ahead right here on Acadiana's News Channel at 5, over in St. Landry Parish, there's an event to build relationships between police and children. We'll take you to the court coming up at 522. And Daniel Phillips here with us, the night side crew tonight. Daniel's full forecast for where you live coming up next. But first, as we head to break, a look at one Acadiana business hiring right now. If you want to apply for this job or any other, or if you're an employer who wants to be featured, just visit our Facebook group, The Rebound Acadiana Jobs. Post on the wall when you can be chosen to be featured right here at 5.